for uh, about six months. I've heard of the Swedish Air Force fan club. I'm not sure if I'm a member or not, um, but I'm really looking forward to this. And it, it has been pres presented to me as a as a wonderful, wonderful time to meet and, and discuss uh, what's uh, what's uh, happened to the Swedish Air Force the last year and the upcoming years. And it's kind of a family and friends. So uh, and it's kind of uh, unusual to me to uh, to have a speech or have a brief with a with a glass of champagne next to me. So this is this is something else I can tell. So I hope it's not a trap. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, so let's see another slide. So uh, first of all, let's uh, uh, introduce my, myself. Uh, my name is uh, uh, Jonas Wigman. Um, I you know, uh, took office uh, late December last year and uh, uh, now commanding the, the Air Force. Uh, previous to that, I was uh, the Deputy Chief of uh, Joint Operations um, in the uh, Armed Forces uh, Headquarters. Previous to that, uh, serving on different uh, staff functions, uh, one of them responsible for the uh, procurement from the Armed Forces side being one that uh, ordered, ordered all the equipment from the FMB side. So, and uh, before that, uh, uh, I've been uh, commanding the uh, test and evaluation center, the flight test center in Sweden, and, and also a uh, short journey, journey to Afghanistan for advising the Afghan Air Force. So that's some of my background, and, and uh, the rest of it you can download on the bio on, on the, on the web page. And that's going to be a kind of a, a, you know, this kind of style of briefing. I won't have you give you slides on facts and figures and uh, where exactly is the, the, the processes, uh, what are the number of aircrafts and when do they arrive. We can give you all those numbers uh, if you want them or if you don't have them. But I will try to give you a brief, an overview of the Air Force and kind of set the tone on where we are and where we are going and uh, hope to inspire uh, discussions, uh, questions afterwards, during, if you have any questions when it comes to, uh, you know, understanding, you know, me, me not, you know, making myself clear on, on facts, uh, we can have the questions afterwards and we can have all the discussions during the mingle afterwards. I think that, uh, if that sounds like a good plan to you. Okay, good. Again, I get locked in by the uh, kind of the podium there. So, I mean, of course, being a commander of the Air Force is uh, such a great thing. It's, uh, I mean, being commanding a service is, is the, the, one of the best jobs you can have. And being, being a commander of the Air Force must be the best, the best job in the world. <laughs> so, uh, and, and, I mean, I have a great years. It's been quite intense, uh, intense uh, first six months, of course, but uh, still, still a, a great job that I am enjoying. But I, I do feel the pressure as commander of the Air Force. I feel the pressure, of course. Uh, I mean, commanding such such a such an Air Force with all you know, for me, a pressure on me to deliver on the Air Force, on its personnel, on the, the capability we have. But also, of course, uh, quite a lot large pressure right now on the on the security situation, of course. Uh, we all know about, about it, and we all know the details. Uh, we all follow the uh, TV on Ukraine. We probably many of you are reading up on, on, on Intel or articles about Ukraine. But that has very, very much formed the situation for the Swedish Air Force right now, as many other Air Forces, but very much uh, for us. And I will try to explain you, to you why, because it creates some challenges that we are trying to tackle. The security situation, of course, has, from our perspective, in our neighborhood, deteriorated for a number of years. So it's been, uh, uh, we had a decision, we had a decision to increase the Air Force capabilities for a while now. So, I mean, we have been planning, we have been, you know, trying to figure out how to build the most powerful or competent Air Force that, that there is, and, and we had a plan for that. And that was before the Ukraine situation. So right now we are in a situation where we are trying to build the Air Force, trying to create the future Air Force full speed. But you know, adding to that is the security situation in, in, in our surroundings. And also security situation that can 
come to the world with no, with no notice. So that's very much present in the tone today in the Air Force. The knowledge that we are going full speed on previous decision, decisions to build future capabilities. But also knowledge that we have a security situation that we need to handle it right here and right now. That's obvious. And also a situation that we need to, that we need to increase the situation, in, uh, uh, the capability even faster. And adding to that is also our new security, political security strategy. A client for and hopefully becoming a member of NATO. That's also a task, a task you have. And that is kind of, a, kind of the challenge we have right now. So if we try to, for me, I'm trying to describe the, the layers of challenges that we see in front of us for the Air Force. That was, we were, so a number of years ago we were more or less asked how fast can you be, build your capabilities? With what rate can you increase your capabilities in all aspects when it comes to the Air Force? And then we got that decision, that political decision, that political decision. And then we have this increased uh, uh, security environment. So we had one full-time job, increasing the capability. We got another full-time job, handled the crisis, the further, 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 further deteriorating of the security situation. And then we got another job, with what, which was join the NATO with all, all, all the preparation that we need for the integration process for, again, hopefully becoming a member and hopefully very soon. I will come back to those, those, uh, those points uh, uh, further down in the, in, in the slideshow. So when it comes to the uh, operational con uh, context, and I know you all know about it, uh, just kind of, a, kind of laying it out there. I mean, what we see is quite a change in the way, in the, in the battlefield, in the air domain battlefield. And again, we all see it on TV again. It's long distance uh, attacks, it's unmanned uh, vehicles or unmanned aircraft, unmanned assets, it's one way attack uh, aircraft, it's the air defense uh, uh, part, it's the cyber, and it's the space, the space domain coming into it. So it's a very complex scenario that we are into right now and trying to adapt to. So I won't give this any, we can come back to this if we have any discussion on this, but this is, I think, it's, it's, it's a very, it's a changing environment for the air domain. And the mo maybe the most important part in the changing environment is the distance. It's the longer distance and it's the multi-domain. So it's a, it's a very complex challenge to tackle. It's a very complex military problem to tackle. And we see that play out today in Europe and in Ukraine. And going to our, our idea how to, how to encounter, how to solve this military problem. So it's going to be one part of you know, the aspect angle to it. How do we approach the problem? And then how do we conceptualize it? So we are still in a position, and I think uh, where we come from a, from a background that's been, that where we have been in this kind of situation, this kind of long distance situation, the Swedish Armed Forces culture and the Swedish Air Force culture has been built on the knowledge that we will be attacked. We will be attacked without any warning. The attacker will be the first one attacking, will draw first blood in the conflict. And we are outnumbered. So that's where we come from, that's where our tactical tactical plan comes from. And this is this is a way for us to show how we approach the problem. So we can, we can approach it from these different aspects. One aspect is the quantity. But we have, uh, as from our perspective, all the time realized that we, will, we can never count on being, you know, beat the enemy on quantity. 
quantity is quality in itself, but not for us. We don't have the capability to count on to be, uh, you know, being on the upper hand in quantity. We can uh, have high -tech technology, and uh, for an airport like us, we have a kind of a high technology level, but still, we can be at par. We can count on being at par with the enemy on, on, on technology level. So, but about when it comes to tactical, the tactical aspects, our, our, that, that is where our focus lies, both in air and on the ground. And at this time, I just want to focus on, on the maybe the more maybe maybe the more difficult part of air operations, maybe the more complicated part of air operations, and that is the ground tactics. It's connected to the air, but it's the ground tactics. So we've always had, and what we see for the future, and what we try to develop the capability for now, is to have ground tactics that enable us to, and though we don't have the quantity enough, and though we have probably just enough of the technology level, but to be, to be faster than the enemy when it comes to turn around, when it comes to, to, to projecting air capabilities there. And many of you interested in Swedish Air Force know that, that is the ground tactics that is, is very special for us. Uh, and these days, looking at the uh, uh, operational environments, I could probably take a leave and go and have briefings like this, pay for a few years, and teach about ground tactics, about dispersed operations, because that's the, the Swedish way to handle the ground tactics. I talked to my European colleagues, they're all very interested, because the, the battlefield is so huge so long distance nowadays. So it puts all our air forces under threat. So the capability to protect ourselves, the capability to protect our logistics, and the capability to turn around for new sorties is very central to all of us. And that is a, that is a, that is an, a challenge for all European air forces, including the Swedish today. So our concept, many of, many of you probably know the concept for, for, for dispersed operations and logistics under attack. I move away, you can take the pictures of the slides, it's a very good slide. Um, so this shows kind of a, a back in the days concept that we are now rebuilding. A new concept built on the uh, old concept. Back in the day we had more bases out in the forest with a main base and, and uh, dispersed, uh, dispersed landing strips and dispersed uh, locations for turnarounds. Today we are more using, we're using more of regional uh, uh, airports. We are trying to build on the infrastructure that is already there, maybe manned, maybe already with uh, uh, rescue assets, maybe already with, uh, with ADC assets. But it's still the same concept, we are rebuilding, having the opportunity to land at multiple places, having the opportunity to switch bases on week's notice, on day's notice, on hour, hour's notice. The opportunity to switch position within base, bases on minutes or hours. So that's the, the concept and that's, the, that's a very high priority for me as commander of the, the, the Air Force right now to rebuild and further, further, further uh, develop the concepts of these first operations. Uh, going to the, uh, from the, the, the dispersed, the dispersed concept and, uh, 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 and talk a little bit about air operations side. So right now the, the environment and the operational environment is very much going to, as I said, expand it, both when it comes to distance and when it comes to domain. Uh, it's very clear right now that, that the, the only way we can tackle the challenge right now is through multi-domain operations. We need to further develop our capability to connect the domains. 
to, to connect the domains in such a way that all sensors in all domains, all shooters in all domains are connected and working together. And also, not only connecting domains, but also connecting different kind of assets. National assets and multinational assets. So, that would be three focus areas when it comes to de developing operations for the Swedish Air Forces. It's the dispersed operations, it's the multi-domain connected operations, and it's the multinational connected operations. <laughs> Because it's very clear at this point in time that air power is best, best utilized through international cooperation and multi-domain cooperations. With the same purpose, to, to pick to all assets, having them working together to create the capability we need to face the threat we see today. So that's going to be, be our main focus. And that also comes to a future membership in NATO. That, that also comes to the, that is also important when we talk about cooperating uh, with neighboring nations in the Nordic context, for example, or Northern Europe context. That we see, that we seek a way, try to develop a way to work together, to use each other's strengths and weaknesses to provide the best, best air power. Talk a little bit about uh, the different uh, different aspects of cooperation. Of course, uh, we have an ongoing uh, NATO integration process. From a Swedish Air Force perspective, the process is going very well. We have been uh, working together with NATO nations and together with NATO for a very long time. Always realizing that we are a small nation and we need to build our capability on operations. So when it comes to technical or procedural integrations, we're there. We're pretty good uh, when it comes to you know, preparing for integrations in NATO. We are also taking uh, very important steps the last few months when it's come to try to inter uh, integrate our you know, other aspects other than the, 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 the pure operational aspects and that goes for uh, C2 that goes for connectivity that, uh, and many other aspects of the NATO integration work. But it's going well and we were very, very, very well prepared. From the from Swedish Air Force perspective, uh, we, uh, I, I think from when, when the time comes, when we finally become a member of NATO, we will be ready to act together in NATO from day zero. So there will be some legislation left to do, there will be some connectivity left to do that we can do only after a membership, but we are, we are as ready as we can be before, before, before a membership. Another aspect uh, that we are also working uh, very uh, much on is cooperating in the, in the Nordic uh, concept. This might seem like a new thing, it has uh, reached uh, the media uh, the last uh, few months, the cooperation between the Nordic air chiefs. And that's based on the Nordic air commanders in camp that uh, we, we, uh, we had uh, together uh, a couple of months ago. So the intent means to build on the already existing, and who has been existing for, for a long time, the, the Nordic defense cooperation. And the intent, what it's saying is that we, we should use each other to together create the capability we need. We, used, we, we should cooperate on every aspect to become as integrated as possible, not only when it comes to operations, but also when it comes to training, when it comes to development, when it comes to doctrines, when it comes to anything. We, so that's a kind of a, a message of ambition when it comes to cooperating with, within the Nordic countries to develop the best capabilities that we can. We are already sending uh, students to each other's uh, schools. We are already uh, visiting uh, every exercise we do. And we are trying to figure out how do we, in a Nordic context, and how do we, in the Nordic countries, in a NATO context, cooperate as best as possible to solve the different tasks. 
So that's uh, two important uh, important part of, of, our, of our future, the Nordic context and the NATO context, both uh, making each other uh, each other strong. And that's one of one part of the challenges uh, we have. I will mention a few. Klaus will come back a little bit later and mention uh, and tell you a little bit about the equipment and material that we are procuring and the time after that. Uh, but I just uh, want to mention a few. But first of all, I'm in kind of a luxurious position, but also a challenging position. The Swedish Air Force is more or less exchanging every major platform the upcoming years. Where we're having a new pilot training platform, we're having a new tactical transport aircraft platform. Uh, in the future, we will have new fighter aircrafts, uh, we will have new air, uh, airborne early warning aircrafts. So we're more or less uh, re renewing the whole, the whole Swedish Air Force, which is uh, a, a challenge, uh, but it's, uh, it's of course a, a luxury to be in that position to, to have the opportunity to do that. We will introduce the degree from Echo version. I think most of you have heard about it. And it's a huge step for us, it's very important that I think uh, the platform itself may hide a little bit of its capability or a little bit of the knowledge of its capability because it looks like a current weapons to an untrained eye. Uh, but this is, a, this, is a, this is a real big step we are taking in, in, in uh, fighter capability in Sweden. Uh, there is a lot of things to, to comment on this. Uh, but uh, if, if I had to pick a few, one of them would be the electronic warfare suit on this. The electronic capability overall, the sensor capability of the European Echo. That's going to enable us to tackle the future, future threats. And the other one that we are looking forward to explore the, 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 the possibilities and the capabilities is that uh, we, have, we now have a platform where we have uh, Divide the flight critical systems from 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 weapons and uh, other system, which means that we can faster explore uh, possibilities to develop the capability, and I think that's very important for us in, in a, a very fast changing environment, threat environment. So that's uh, that's the two highs of that, and we'll last we probably come, come back to that. I probably stole some of these talking points, and I know we'll see. Uh, the other one, uh, and it's also connected to the same capabilities, of course, the Global Eye. Uh, everybody talks about the Global Eye. Uh, we are looking forward to this. Now we're having the uh, early, uh, the airborne, uh, airborne radar today, more or less a, a air domain or, or, or a maritime domain aircraft that we have to have today. Uh, today. I talked about it earlier the multi-domain operations or the capability for us to find a target, to fix, find, fix and track a target, to engage a target. That loop multi-domain, including satellites and also uh, the global eye, including the grip and echo. So it's going to be a system of system and the global eye fits very well into that, being a multi-domain enhancer. I think that's uh, that's uh, that's also a capability that we are uh, looking forward to. Last we'll come back to this also, I guess. And uh, finally, uh, and having uh, Ella in my room, which you can address all the questions. She's uh, she's my space chief, space commander. I call her Ace of Space. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, this is an, this is an area that we are investing investing. Knowledge and, and in right now, I think from our perspective, our space strategy right now is quite ambitious. We are aiming to to be to, to to be a nation active in space and taking part of that domain properly. So I'm I'm also responsible for the space domain, and to me that's important, but that, because that gives gives me the opportunity to connect the domain, connect the space domain with the air domain in, in, in a useful way. 
So we have uh, more or less started up the program. Uh, I mean, we have been there knowledge-wise for a while, but now we are planning for our own capabilities when it comes to space, going for uh, demonstrating capability next year and then going on fr from there with our own capabilities. So this is, a, this is an area which is uh, where we are quite ambitious uh, and where we also have uh, multi, many, many multi, multinational uh, uh, corporations right now. That was my final slide.